Before the first bomb exploded over Washington, D.C., the idea of a nuclear war seemed unthinkable. The doctrine of mad, or mutually assured destruction, spelled out the insanity of such a conflict. The destruction from such a war would be absolute. There would be no winners, only tortured survivors. But despite this, they pushed the button. What started as a single explosion escalated uncontrollably. One bomb turned into dozens, then hundreds. When the mushroom clouds dispersed and the electromagnetic pulses faded, what was left? A world unrecognizable, a landscape forever altered, and humanity brought to its knees. In the wake of this cataclysmic event, life as we knew it ceased to exist. This video describes how society would change in the desolate, radioactive aftermath of World War III. The first year is one of raw survival, of redefining what it means to be human when all the frameworks we took for granted are shattered. Your local grocery store, a once reliable source for sustenance, is now either a charred skeleton or a looted shell. Canned food becomes worth more than gold as people scramble to find something, anything to eat. As modern conveniences vanish and basic necessities become scarce, society starts to unravel. In movies, communities often unite against a common threat, but real life is more complicated. Your neighbor might offer you shelter, but could also be eyeing your food stash with growing desperation. Picture his family, his brother, son, or daughter starving to death. If you're hoarding food, it won't take long for your friend to become your enemy. Finding clean water also turns into a life or death challenge. With fallout contaminating most of the surface water, people are forced to look elsewhere. Underground wells and springs become hot commodities, often guarded by those willing to use force to maintain control. Personal hygiene takes a backseat to survival, and long showers become a distant memory. Hospitals are overwhelmed if they're still standing, and basic medical supplies run out quickly. People turn to home remedies, but medical problems that were easily treatable before now become life-threatening. A superficial cut could become a death sentence if it gets infected. Law and order disintegrate. Police forces are disbanded. America's rules-based order collapses without a functioning legal system, and people resort to vigilante justice. Some areas might see the rise of self-appointed sheriffs, while others descend into lawlessness. The climate changes and the sky is often dark, filled with the ash and soot of a thousand fires. This devastates the weather, making traditional agriculture almost impossible and killing off the already scarce wildlife. The immediate casualties from the blasts and ensuing fires are just the beginning. Radiation poisoning claims many more lives, and those who survive are often left with lifelong health issues. 90% of the population is killed by the time the war's first anniversary rolls around. This translates into an unbelievable 300 million Americans dead one year after an all-out nuclear war. Five years into this new world, survivors have made sobering adjustments to their way of life. Gone are the days of picking up groceries from a store. Now food comes directly from your own labor. Whether it's through hunting or foraging, the forests have become the new supermarkets. Farming remains risky due to the lingering presence of radioactive isotopes like cesium-137, which has a half-life of 30 years, serving as a persistent, haunting reminder of humanity's catastrophic choices. Water remains a precious commodity. People have devised all sorts of purification methods, from boiling to filtration systems made from scavenged materials. By this time, the remaining survivors have congregated around essential resources, forming communities near freshwater, fertile land, or areas that support renewable energy like wind and solar. These settlements are governed in different ways. Some have a democratic system, holding elections and maintaining a semblance of law and order. Others are basically run by whoever's the strongest or most clever, kind of like what you'd see in a zombie apocalypse movie. Technology regresses to a level reminiscent of the late 19th century. There are no more smartphones, so people use radios to communicate. 
Libraries, or what's left of them, become hubs of knowledge as people realize that old world skills like blacksmithing, carpentry, and basic mechanical repair are invaluable. By now, the climate has somewhat stabilized, but it's still not the world we knew. Winters are harsh, summers are unpredictable, and what used to be common weather patterns are now a roll of the dice. Crops frequently fail, and people rely heavily on preserved foods to get through the seasons. Life has reverted to a pre-industrial era, a time without refrigerators. Techniques like salting, smoking, and fermenting become essential for keeping food edible for extended periods. The population has dwindled even further since the first year. The ongoing threats of disease, malnutrition, violence, and radiation continue to claim lives. Cities, once bustling centers of life and culture, have turned into ghost towns. Some have been reclaimed by nature, while others have become dangerous lairs for gangs and marauders. 25 years have passed since the world was plunged into nuclear chaos. The survivors born into this post-apocalyptic world know it as their only reality, while the older generation clings to fragmented memories of a time before the devastation. Food and water are no longer desperate daily searches. They've become more secure thanks to the rise of organized agriculture. Though less advanced than the pre-war days, these collectives are good enough to support larger communities. While canned food was a valuable relic of the past, Fresh produce and livestock have become the new staples. Settlements have grown larger with a mix of rudimentary governments. Some places hold elections, some are ruled by a council of elders, and others might be under a more authoritarian regime. Technology is making a cautious comeback. The brightest minds, trained by the elders who remember the old world, have managed to build simple electrical grids. Radios are more common now, and foster improved communication between settlements. There are even attempts to build simple computers using salvaged parts. The environment has stabilized to some extent. Although the earth will take hundreds of years to recover from the war completely, basic crops can grow during the warmer months and fishing is possible in less contaminated bodies of water. Some regions even experience seasons, although they're not what they were before the war. The concept of nation-states is slowly re-emerging. These mini-countries have their own laws, trade agreements, and armed forces. The human population is a shadow of what it once was, but it's growing. Children's education focuses on survival skills, but also elements of history, science, and art, as people understand the importance of not just living, but also to remember what it is to be human. So 25 years on, life is not just about survival. It's about rebuilding, relearning, and looking to a future that could be not just bearable, but perhaps one day even bright. Thanks for joining me on this dark exploration of nuclear war. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Until the next time.